supply chain. So in this chart here, we, we uh, surveyed industry professionals, and you can see two dates that they see it um, leading to more targeted marketing campaigns and more intelligent um, shopping uh, suggestions as well. As a user, you can ask more natural questions. So it might be something like, I have a wedding in Napa this spring, what should I wear? So think about, you know, in the, the sort of experience shopping for apparel that we face today is you would have to search by filters, right? I want a dress, maybe you can search by color. So you're getting a more natural experience, giving the uh, user a sense of how it might look in their natural environment. Now Wayfair's been on this journey for a while. They've been using AR to try to unlock this. And in this particular example, they're using generative AI. And how this changes the experience is that a shopper can upload a photo of their room and then prompt the system to offer a different suggestion, a different style of room, so to speak. So it's really a lot more personalized than what we saw from the AR experience. Over the next, uh, it's over the next five years is how the question was worded. Uh, so certainly there's a lot of opportunity if you do get it right. And let's talk about some recommendations as we look at this trend in particular. And consumers do want more up from their shopping experience. And clearly those retailers that are out in front are going to be doing that. You also have to uncover new ways to drive customer relationships. So this is all about data. And gathering data has become challenging in some ways because of the end of third party cookies. So the first party data has become that much more important, which is leading to things like retailers looking at uh, more advanced loyalty programs or retail media networks as an example. And then the last note is to certainly carefully evaluate these emerging technologies. Just because they're out there doesn't mean that you necessarily should be investing, but for those who invest and get the experience right and really unlock that next generation experience, there's gonna be a retailer or two that really go down as uh, defining that so-called Uber moment uh, for e-commerce. And also the sister app, Duan, in China. Now brands and retailers are leveraging it, pushing out their brand messaging on these platforms. But what we're in particular seeing is this uh, idea of the viral videos coming from users themselves. So brands not involved, um, and may not even approve of the messaging. Where we ask users, have you um, used these apps in the last month? Uh, so you can see what we're showing you here is a change in three years, a 20%, 20 percentage point jump um, in usage. So they're fast growing. And in particular, they're fast growing with Gen Z. So this is asking that same question, but cutting it by generation. And you can see that two thirds of Gen Z turn to this app. Now, what is, it, what is the appeal of, of, of the TikTok platform? Well, it's the, the, uh, the video nature of it, also the endless scroll that you have, and then advanced algorithms that allow you know, a brand to tee up the right video at the right time. In 2023, a video of them uh, freezing the roll up and then wrapping it around ice cream. And basically it created this flavored cone idea. The viral went, the viral went, the video went viral. And then for roll up started to fly off the shelves in Israel, it actually created a black market and prices soared. Um, I think a price, uh, I think it, it went like eight times what the the traditional retail price was. They created a dance routine that they did in restaurants. They never posted it on their social media. Instead, they got other users to do so, or users were entertained enough that they did so. Um, so that's another way of thinking about this, how to sort of stand out in the, in the crowded social media landscape. Actually become a retailer in their own right. So in 2020, doing the Chinese app, they um, pivoted from being a pure social platform to also a retailer. Um, so they become one of the big giants when it comes to live streaming in China, and also have, have reaped the benefits when it comes to online sales. So this is some new research from Euromonitor, um, from new, new e-commerce research. And what we're showing you here is that when it comes to beauty and personal sales sold online, 
Dewin saw an 81% increase in those three quarters, those first three quarters of 2023 versus the same period in 2022. So you can see, um, you see the, a slight comparison here. They're actually the number two retailer now selling beauty and personal care online in China, only behind Tmall. Definitely be a big driver when it comes to trends like live streaming and also social media for that matter, social commerce. So your monitor forecasts that consumers globally will spend about $650 billion buying goods and services through a live streaming platform. Uh, so it's uh, your brand sales. Uh, certainly they may be of the plan or organic variety, but like this trend talks about, increasingly we're seeing more of this uh, go organic. Um, and there is an opportunity to really capitalize on you know, the, the influence that certain demographics like Gen Z have on TikTok. So I think savvy brands out there will uh, kind of, will lean in heavier there to try to push as well. And then like I just talked about, uh, these buy dance platforms are increasingly looking to become retailers. Um, so you may be working with them in one way, um, but be cognizant of the fact that in a year, three, five years, your relationship with them can certainly change pretty fast. So what's driving this is, is clearly the, the mounting economic uncertainty and then our digitally savvy population. What's happening here is they're turning to online platforms to try to find ways to save money. But it also goes a step further in the sense that they're using these platforms maybe in ways the brand's intended, maybe not, and also in ways that they might disapprove of outright. So this is some of our economic research. You know, we all know the, the economic uncertainty continues. Inflation rates have improved, but they're at historical, still at historical highs. Uh, the cost of living continues to rise. You can see um, more prominent, uh, more challenging in emerging markets in particular. So as such, consumers are turning to these platforms to try to navigate this period. Um, and this was actually a trend that we also had in last year's content in our 2023 edition. And we're seeing the trend intensify, and the intensification is more so in the sense of um, how, how consumers may be tapping into these platforms in ways that brands do not intend. So that's the outsmart online name that we've included. First mindset, they're, they're on their mobile devices. Clearly, you guys are all right now. Uh, so we see in our research, where this, the mobile device has become the key research tool channel um, for a vast majority of our product categories. Another big thing driving this is social media, in particular TikTok again. So there is you know, a certain desire when you, when you find these deals to share with others. And one of the big things um, that, that's gone on in terms of a kind of a subtrend is the dupe culture. So this is the idea of getting knockoffs of famous luxury or apparel brands. In particular, Gen Z, you know, they're on TikTok and they're showing these hacks that they found um, for. So they position themselves as kind of this one-stop app for consumers who want to save money so they can get uh, deals, rewards, et cetera. Um, so they earn money um, largely you know, getting, getting the products at, at a cheaper price. So third of the price. Now, historically, a brand like this, they might have tried to, you know, hide who they were um, in an attempt to, you know, uh, trick consumers into buying their product, but they're very out in front because of the dupe culture. This isn't, this isn't a bad thing anymore to buy knockoffs. Um, so they're out there in social media. They have social media fans um, that certainly push their brand as well. In a Reuters story within the last couple of months, they reported that the, the company makes about $2.8 million in sales. Uh, you know, do you plan to save more? And you can see the sentiment, you know, the, the greater concern is among our youngest generation. So Gen Z and millennials, I think it stands in sharp contrast to baby boomers, 29%. They have their wealth and they're, they're good to go. Um, but you know, this particular trend, it really speaks to Gen Z and millennials uh, because of the social media nature of it. 
uh, the economic challenges that they face. It's like the shop back that I talked about. There's an opportunity to refine your proprietary apps and websites. Both of these are all about attracting those budget conscious consumers. But like I talked about, this idea of these organic campaigns, ones that may you know, not align with, with what you're trying to push, push out as a brand, will continue to proliferate, and they may eventually hit your own brand. So you'll have a decision to make whether you want to fight back or seek to benefit uh, from these budget hacks, and we've seen brands take uh, different approaches on that. So what this one's being driven by uh, you know, the economic concerns, we have thrifty consumers out there, they're digitally savvy, they're looking to save a buck, um, and what's happening is uh, the wider community, retail community, uh, and brands, they're starting to invest more in re-commerce, um, starting to you know, expand geographies, add more categories, that type of thing. Where we think what it's leading to is you know, the idea of secondhand or re-commerce isn't new, but we think we're moving to this sort of next evolution of it where it becomes uh, more sophisticated. So this, hence the 2.0 language, isn't new, but it is moving into this next stage of development. And what that entails is, or what we're seeing is almost because of e-commerce development, um, these players are borrowing some of that functionality, bringing it into their re-commerce sites as well. So it might be something like easier payment execution, easier logistics, that type of thing. And they're also expanding across new markets, whether it's geographies or categories. What you can see here in the data, the chart on the left, clearly millennials and Gen Z, they're the biggest secondhand shoppers. But the reason why each of them turn to this is different. So millennials, they're inspired, they're driven, they're motivated to look at secondhand shopping because they view it as a way to, to be helpful, um, to make a positive impact on the world. Whereas Gen Z is, is motivated by it because of insert, their in search of value. But regardless of their different motivations, you can see on the chart to the right that 27% of both of those generations plan to lean in heavier and buy more secondhand in the year ahead. Commerce platform out of Europe. And I wanted to highlight them. They are expanding across new categories. Um, they also have developed almost a sense of community as well. Uh, so they have, they almost operate as sort of like a de facto social media site where you follow other users. So it might be seeing what your friend recently bought, it might be about inspiration, um, or just seeing the latest products. Okay, so this is um, from LVMH, and they're essentially reselling high-end materials to brands and other creatives. Um, so it's a variety of materials from leather to lace, all types of different weights and, and textures and, and all of that. So it's about you know, getting more traction out of what they already do. We see sustainability increasing on the agenda as we look out over the next five years. So this question, 41% say they plan to increase or invest in sustainability initiatives in the next five years. They're looking at more secondhand. So for retailers and brands, you really should be considering entering or maybe expanding your presence as this becomes um, more important moving forward. And then also look at how to innovate with new features. Increasingly, there's software out there that enables uh, re execute logistics. And then of course, um, it should be communicated as part of your wider sustainability messaging. This used to be voluntary. It's increasingly gonna become mandatory. On here, social commerce, I mean not social commerce, e-commerce is in intending, in continuing to increase. We have more store closures by certain retail chains. And then these sustainability concerns like I just talked about. So it's putting pressure on retailers to really look at this again um, and to really understand that the return experience is part of you know, a more holistic customer experience and a loyalty driver, really. So this idea of creating a hassle-free return is challenging. And one of the challenges is just how you define it. Uh, so we have a question in our survey where we ask, 
how you want to return it. And 46% globally say return by mail is my number one option. <laughs> Vast differences by generation. Baby boomers, they agree with that sentiment, but Gen Z at the other end of the spectrum, they want to return in store. We're seeing more retailers uh, charge for returns, but half of digital consumers globally, they expect free returns. And 15% of them will abort purchases if the return policy is subpar. So certainly there's a variety of tactics being deployed. Um, one part of it is just trying to reduce returns, you know, return, reduce the need for a return in the first place. But secondly, it's all about trying to get more out of your returns. So Best Buy opened up 10 um, small format stores where essentially they can sell refurbished products uh, for consumers. So it, it hits, you know, it, it appeals to the budget conscious but it also helps them recoup more from their returned items, able to return experience. So this is Happy Returns. They um, have a, an experience that you can embed in your website globally to ease return and exchange. And they've, um, they also have outlets, 5,000 outlets across the states where they team up with retailers like Staples. So a consumer can go in and return a product. It's sent to a distribution center, resorted, and then sent to the brand. Returns is moving up the agenda, unfortunately, for retailers. Um, you can see 63% plan to in continue or even accelerate investments in this way. And I think the key is shifting that mindset from viewing it as a revenue dream to instead a loyalty builder. So quick recommendations here. Yes, the, return co the cost around returns is rising, but that doesn't mean it should just be shifted to consumers. Um, again, we should look holistically at the experience and, and consider its impact to loyalty. Second, offer an experience that is straightforward. If it's complicated, if it's cumbersome, a consumer may not make the return and may not shop at your retailer again. And then lastly is investigating new ways to leverage physical assets, whether it's your own store footprint or something like Happy Returns. It's a way to reduce costs, reduce the impact to the environment, and if it's your own stores, you might be enticing that consumer to spend that returned money in store. Takeaways that I see across our trends. Um, so at a higher level, what are the themes that we're seeing? First off is online shopping continues to mature. We saw this very prominently in three of our trends last year. I think we see it very strongly in two of them. That intuitive e-commerce that I spoke about, the idea of generative AI, um, enhancing that online experience. And the second is re-commerce 2.0. So taking that development and bringing it into the re-commerce market. Next is cautious and conscious consumption grows. We saw this last year. We're seeing it again this year. So it speaks to the idea of consumers trying to get that deal, they outsmart online, or they're turning to secondhand, they're turning to re-commerce to try to save money as well. And of course, that also speaks to the conscious consumption. And then lastly is consumers desire more power in relationships with brands. Um, so we're seeing this in, in the two social media driven ones, uh, both the TikTok economy and Outsmart Online. At the root, social media is about giving more power to consumers and they are um, using that in the exchange. With that, I thank you for attending.